Hi folks, Neil at Custom Pod Limited, and today I'm going to show you how to replace the LCD screen in an iPod 5th gen video. There we go, like, see this? Obviously, it looks a bit blue, but it's not. Uh, but those lines across the screen have got to go. Uh, something damaged has, has caused those, so let's unplug it and let's go for the repair. Right, appleipodparts.com is uh, our website, and you can find all of the tools you need and the parts to do this. You obviously to start with, you're going to need the new LCD screen. Again, AppleIPodParts.com. Here it comes. Genuine part. You got the uh, the little tab there to help you peel off. There's a screen protector on there. Stop you getting your greasy mitts on there. We also sell the tools, the toolkit on our site. Non-marking tools. We sell the tools separately, and also the uh, sort of small screwdrivers and all those sort of things. So AppleIPodParts.com for the parts. Right here we go for the guide. So you got your two non non-marking tools and we're looking to get into the side of uh, the iPod video here use the uh, the tool itself now the top tip here is just give it a tiny little squeeze on the edge to try and get the, the tool in it's quite tough these don't give up a great deal so what we're looking to do is find an edge you've got to be patient and you've got to mind your fingers so there you go just found it found the edge we just found a little bit of entry. So now what we're looking to do is run the tool in to the point where it's about, you know, it's in there. And we're going to start putting it down and pushing in as we go, just to pop the little clips that are down the side. And you can hear them clip now. They're quite tough to do. But once you've got the hang of it, you're just looking to do that motion as you go down. And then run around the corner. There's a little clip at the bottom there. And... Uh, so we've got the side open, we're looking to pop the top, you see it's just starting to come away there. You want the tool in, again mind your fingers and just run it down there. And pretty much as you run it down in that direction it pops the clip anyway, but you're looking to do that sort of motion anyway. Um, with the top with the top clip, one bottom, because there's two at the bottom on either side of the dot connector, and the ones down the side it normally comes away. What you're looking to do is very, very tightly, you don't want to tear those two apart because you'll start breaking cables inside. As you open it up You've got two connections. Let's turn it around there. First one first is the battery. Comes from all the way down there into this. Now what you can do is literally just get it under and just give it a little bit of a lift up. It will pop out. There we go. Battery and then you can open it up there. You have the two parts. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move the remove the hard drive. Obviously we've got to get all the way to the front of the iPod to replace the screen. So gently pick up the hard drive, you can pop it over and there you expose the innards of the iPod. Now, dead easy, remember, don't just yank the hard drive out. To remove the hard drive, we'll remove this first, get rid of the rear casing. Now in there, most of these clips have little like bezels on that you pop up, so you get your tool under there and just flick up, there's a, like a little brown edge there. You flick it up, there you go, like a door, opens like a door and then it just allows you to gently coax that cable out. So there you go, rear casing finished with. You'll see what I mean there about the little cable. You see see there? It's a little, little little flap. There you go. It flips up and down. Same on the hard drive. See that black bar across there? That black bar? That is what clasps the cable. So we're looking to pop that. So we get the tool under there nice and gently. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to bust it. If in doubt, don't do it, but you can flick it back up. There you go. It clips out. Oh, wait, it comes. Jobs are good and there's your hard drive. That's out of the way. So we're going to replace the screen. We can leave that cable in there. We might as well remove those two. So pop those two little rubber things out. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to part the frame from the front cover to access to the screen. So we need a small screwdriver to attempt that. Tiny little Phillips as you get AppleIPodParts.com, shameless plug and toolkit. You get this screwdriver in there. Tiny little Phillips screwdriver. We're going to pop these six screws out um, and put, set them down over there. Obviously you don't have to go silly on, on anti-static uh, sort of awareness but just make sure that you know you touch the metal frame as you go and, and you touch something metal around you just just to ground yourself so that you're not touching the, the board and if you can get away without touching the board too much then obviously more the more the better so pop these six screws out 
what we're going to do is we're going to lift the front casing off of the back casing. Now again another top tip that you won't know is if you hold the metal frame in your finger and thumb either side you got your, your finger and thumb there, hold the plastic so you're not on the metal, hold the plastic and get your finger and just gently push on the click wheel, push it back down whilst maybe getting your finger into the into there so you know you're trying to pull the frame up you click well you know click wheel is going to go back the frame uh, the sorry the plastic out is going to come up there we go so that we've got the front away from the bear sorted that exposes the screen now you spin it over I keep your fingers on the click wheel because then it won't fall out the middle bar won't fall out but it doesn't matter if it does turn it over and, and there we go we've got a little clip there we can do the same thing again get a tiny little tool in there and just flick up the plastic there he goes flick up the uh, the uh, there you go the LCD screen cable is gone and out it pops now bring in the new screen the new screen oh, there you go the, the, the middle button's gone but I can show you how to put that in middle screen's there obviously you've got to make sure that that's our screens come with those chips all protected but some of the cheaper screens you get they don't, you've got to make sure they do, otherwise they touch the metal bracket and your screen's history. So you slot the screen in, those two little white sit in the recess, and you're looking to ping that cable back in. It takes a little bit of little bit of practice, but you press back on the on the cable and gently push it into the you only needs gentle as well. If it if it takes more than gentle, then something's wrong. You're gonna break something, so you have a bit of a rethink, but that pushes all the way into there all the way to you see just a tiny bit of gold and then you've got to push that clasp back down um, you can do it with your thumbnails or your thumbs or even the tools but you know be gentle with it and down it clips and it's you know it's quite firm and there you go it's it's nicely held in position spin it over and there you've got the screen doesn't matter if you get fingerprints on because it's got a cover on so click wheel that you know that flaps around put the button back in so we're going to put the button back in in its right position turn it over and obviously what I do, a little bit of a tip, is you know you turn the board onto the click wheel, it stops the centre button from falling back out again. Make sure it's somewhere in the in the middle of there, and we're going to go with the screen. So you know, quite happy that it's all uh, it's all good. I've not touched the inside of there, so it's not going to be messy. You literally peel the protector off. It's all good, no dust, straight on with there. My tip is put your middle finger, that finger there, your index finger, through onto the click wheel to hold it in position, and then you is if you lift the plastic, you put the plastic cover over there and there you go, <laughs> I made it look easy you might have a few attempts at that but I have done a fair few of these um, make sure it's all the way home and there's no gap sometimes um, you see those little the, the little plastic lugs on the screen that went the other side there's two little spigots that the this plastic front sits through if it's not all the way through then there'll be a gap there don't force it, take it off, wiggle the screen up and down with your things like that make sure it's located and, and they will sit nicely you don't need to force anything on the, anything on these like that one that needs a bit of a locate in there. There we go, it's down again. So, once you're happy with the screen in place, it's all plugged in, we're going to go back with the screws. Put them all six of them back in again. And this is quite fiddly. It's always helpful to have a magnetic screwdriver on these little ones. Put one in either side just to make sure that it doesn't all fall apart on you. Um, yeah. So yeah, as I put the uh, the screen on, it's always always quite handy to put your finger through and keep the click wheel in place because it can be quite frustrating because the centre button of the click wheel always always wants to fall out. You don't want that. There you go. One, two more screws. Now you know reassembly is pretty much as in reverse. You've got to remember those little clips. You know, poking ribbon cables in, and uh, it's, it's going to be gentle. You don't need to force anything. And, uh, obviously, if you're left with any spare, spare parts at the end, you've done something wrong. Right, there we go. You've got the chassis back in together. What we're going to do is uh, we'll put the hard drive in first so I can lift it up and show you. So, top, top tip, bring your thumb in, push the cable out so you can see that, expose those lines there. Bring the hard drive in with the little clip up, and it slots slots in. It's a tiny little slot, and it slots all the way up into the second white line. Can you see that? Maybe not. There we go. Again, with your thumbs, push that bar down. It's clamped the hard drive. Sit it down on the on the floor, on the deck, table, anything you want, as long as it's not the ceiling. 
And we're going to go for the headphone jack again. Headphone jack. There's that little baby. That brown clip in there, like I showed you, and I pushed it down. I've just I put it back up again. Two white lines on the connector, on the cable. Push it all the way as in, give it a wiggle. You don't have to force it. And then over with your fingernail, back down on the clip. There we go. Lift the hard drive back over. Slots it in nicely. It all sits in there snug. Shouldn't shouldn't poke up or anything. And we're going to go with these little rubber sort of bumpers in the bottom. Put one in there. Put one in there. And then finally, we've got to put the battery in now. The battery connector is in there. See that brown piece there? That is a clip that needs to be popped up, just like the others. I'm going to get a little tool in there, just underneath it, and just give it a tiny pull up, and it will clip. And there it is. And it's actually loose. You don't. It doesn't come all the way off. It's just that if it comes all the way off, it doesn't matter. You can push it back on. But you know, if it's loose, it's just kind of held there. You can put the cable back in. So you come back here with the battery cable. Bit of a juggling act. You lift the two bits together. You're looking where the contacts are going that way towards the top of the iPod. And I'm going to do it so you can see it. Push the cable. It will slot nicely when that when that clasp is up. It will go all the way to the bottom, as far as it will go. And then you get your thumbnail, and you just rock your thumbnail in, push it down, and what you can do, you know, give it a final nudge with a connector to make with a tool to make sure the connector's all the way down. There we go. So hard drive's in place. It's not moved either or either side. You know what I advise is you make sure that it's it's all good, and uh, you restart the iPod before you put it all back together. I know it's fairly scratched up this one, but um, seen some use. But there you go, the screen's coming up. All's going to work. Make sure those black lines are gone. Any time today, we've got no spare parts on the bench, which is always a good sign. It's all clear. Ah, oh, it's flat. There we go, let's plug it into a charger. It's always the way. It's always best to make sure it works before we put these back together because you don't want to open it up again. Here we go. And hopefully when the white screen menu pops up, there will be no lines and it will all be back to as it should be. Hey, there we go. So, plug the charger out, sit it in. Probably best to one one end first. Make sure the hard drive is all in position again. Oh, none of the bumpers fall out. See if it had a good, good chunk of battery life in it. Wouldn't have to have been doing this. And the other one. And we go. Actually, squish it down, all the way round. There we go. One iPod. Obviously flat, but with a repaired screen, no sign of entry. There we go. Right, I'm Neil Barker at Custom Pod Limited. You can get all the parts at appleipodparts.com. If you don't want to do the repair yourself, visit custompod.co.uk and we can repair them for you. We're the leading iPod and iPhone repair in the UK. So, there you go. A guide to replace your screen on a 5th gen iPod video. Thanks for watching.